OK, so we're going to explore similar triangles in the complex plane. So if we're given the vertices of one triangle as complex numbers in the complex plane, and we're given the vertices of another triangle, again, as complex numbers, we'll find a nice way of determining whether or not these two triangles are similar to each other. We'll start first of all in this case where our similar triangles have the same orientation, so one isn't a reflected version of the other, so it's just one is perhaps rotated, translated, or enlarged. And if we build up some intuition, just first of all, forgetting about complex numbers, how can we actually tell if two triangles are similar in general? So here, one way of telling that these two triangles would be similar would be we'd need the ratio of these two sides, AC and AB, would need to be the same ratio as DF to DE for these two lengths. So you'd need these pairs of corresponding sides to have the same length, but then we'd also need to have the same angle between them. So writing the fact about the lengths as, we can say, the length of AC divided by the length of AB, this needs to be equal to the ratio of the length DF to DE. So we can turn it into a fraction like this. So we need the two pairs of sides need to be in the same ratio, but we also need the two corresponding angles to be equal. So we'd need angle BAC equal to angle EDF. And now if we want to write something similar for our complex numbers, we can think of all, first of all, our lengths could be the modulus of Z3 minus Z1 would give us the length going from Z1 to Z3. So we can write this as the modulus of Z3 minus Z1 divided by the modulus of Z2 minus Z1 for our second side. This ratio needs to be the same as the modulus going from W3 to W1 divided by the modulus going from W2 to W1, like this. So this gives us our statement about the lengths being in the same ratio, but we also need the two angles at the bottom to be equal to each other. And the way to capture this is to think of the sides as vectors. So the vector going from Z1 to Z3, if we think about the argument of this versus the argument going from Z1 to Z2, we could find the difference between the two arguments, and this would give us the angle between our two sides, and similarly we could find the argument of the vector going from W1 to W3, and then subtract the argument going from W1 to W2. So a nice way of capturing this is, instead of having a difference of arguments, we could actually do the argument as a fraction. So if we do the vector going from Z1 to Z3 is Z3 minus Z1, then if we divide this by Z2 minus Z1, this argument will give us exactly this angle here as a positive number in this orientation. So we need this argument to be equal to the corresponding argument, which is W3 minus W1 for the vector going from W1 to W3. Then we divide by W2 minus W1. So we need these two fractions to be equal and we need these two arguments to be the same as well. But there's actually a nicer way of capturing this. So first of all, if we just, instead of having modulus divided by modulus, we could take the modulus of this entire fraction, which is useful because this entire fraction is the same thing that appears here inside our argument, and similarly for our w's. So we can say that the modulus of this fraction z3 minus z1 over z2 minus z1 needs to be equal to the modulus of the fraction w3 minus w1 over w2 minus w1. So we need this to be true, and also the arguments need to be the same for these two fractions. So we've got the modulus and the arguments for these two fractions, both of which are just complex numbers, are both equal to each other. So if we've got two complex numbers, this fraction and this fraction, they've got the same modulus and they've got the same argument. This is actually the same then as saying that the two complex numbers are equal to each other. So this is all true if and only if the fraction Z3 minus Z1 over Z2 minus Z1 is equal to the fraction W3 minus W1 over W2 minus W1. So if these two fractions are equal to each other, then we've got similar triangles with the same orientation. And now just before we move on to the case where they have different orientations, there's a really nice way of rearranging this fact. So if we multiply on both sides by each of the denominators, this is true if and only if Z3 minus Z1 times W2 minus W1 is equal to W3 minus W1 times Z2 minus Z1. 
then if we expand and take everything over onto the right hand side we see that this is true if and only if we'll just have zero on the left hand side so expanding all of this we get w2 z2 minus w1 z2 minus w3 z1 plus w1 z1 by expanding all of this then taking away the expanded version of these two brackets we'll take away z3 w2 add z1 w2 then we'll add z3 w1 and finally take away z1 w1 and it turns out that this is true if and only if we can express this actually as the determinant of a certain matrix so we can write this as the determinant of the matrix 1 1 1 z1 z2 z3 w1 w2 w3 so this statement is true if and only if the determinant of this matrix is equal to zero so you can just check now if you're interested that the determinant of this matrix here is indeed equal to this expression we had earlier so this gives us a really nice way of capturing then that two triangles z1 z2 z3 and w1 w2 w3 are similar with the same orientation if and only if the determinant of this matrix is zero and now if we consider the case where we've got two triangles which are similar but with a different orientation so there's a reflection has taken place as well as possibly an enlargement here we'll keep this labeling of one two three one two three going around anti-clockwise around our triangle we'll see that we'll get a slightly different criteria to say that they're similar with a different orientation so if we look first of all at our two pairs of sides which have to have lengths in the same ratio we can look at the modulus of z3 minus z1 over the modulus of z2 minus z1 this now corresponds to z1 to z3 goes with w1 to w2 so this would be the modulus of w2 minus w1 over the modulus of w3 minus w1 so we get the reciprocal version of what we had earlier for the lengths however when we look at the arguments we still want to have the same statement for our arguments so going from z1 to z3 minus the argument going from z1 to z2 this would still correspond to the argument w1 to w3 minus the argument going from w1 to w2 so we'd actually still have the same statement about our arguments that the argument of z3 minus z1 over z2 minus z1 this still needs to be equal to the argument of w3 minus w1 over w2 minus w1 so we've got some complex numbers here we'll just write the first one as z3 minus z1 over z2 minus z1 so the modulus of this whole fraction needs to be equal to the modulus of this whole fraction w2 minus w1 over w3 minus w1 but then when we look at the arguments we need to have the reciprocal of this complex number but actually we can spot here there's a fact about the reciprocal of a complex number if you have the argument of the reciprocal of a complex number let's just say 1 over z then the argument of this is just the negative of the argument of z so if you take the reciprocal this just gives you the negative of the argument of that complex number so then just putting this to one side we'd need the magnitude the modulus of these two fractions to be equal and we'd also need the argument of z3 minus z1 over z2 minus z1 this would need to be equal to instead of being equal to the argument of this reciprocal version we could say this needs to be equal to the negative of the argument of its reciprocal so the negative of the argument of w2 minus w1 over w3 minus w1 so this is the same statement here as what we had earlier where we take the reciprocal this means we need to take the negative of the argument there so we've got two complex numbers now this fraction z3 minus z1 over z2 minus z1 and this fraction w2 minus w1 over w3 minus w1 so these two complex numbers have the same modulus but the argument of one is the negative of the argument of the other and this is actually the same as saying then that they're not equal to each other but if they've got the same modulus and the opposite arguments they are complex conjugates of each other so we can say then that z3 minus z1 over z2 minus z1 is equal to it'll be the complex conjugate of this w2 minus w1 
over w3 minus w1. So I haven't found a way to express this using determinants, but this is still a really nice way of expressing the fact that we've got two triangles in the complex plane which are similar, only now with different orientations, where we take the reciprocal of this fraction and we have the complex conjugate in there. So we've now got two different ways of telling if you have similar triangles in the complex plane, depending on the orientation of your two triangles.